In the center of the Greek mainland, our unique aerial perspective reveals something truly remarkable. A collection of colossal pillars rises straight out of the ground like giant stone fingers. A closer look reveals a group of structures precariously balanced on top of the sheer cliffs. These are the monasteries of Medeora. They form one of the world's most extraordinary complexes of Eastern Orthodox Christian monasteries. From the ground, they are hard to see. But taking to the air reveals their staggering solitude. It's a sky-high sanctuary from the outside world. At its peak, there were more than 20 separate monasteries here, cut off from the ground below. Today, more than 65 people live here, spread across six of the clifftop monasteries. Monks inhabit four of them, and two are home to nuns. The devout have called these incredible stone pillars home for nearly a thousand years. But how did they form? And why did the early Christians come here to worship God? Geologist Marcos Vahivanopoulos believes the story behind the floating monasteries of Medeora is linked to the unique geology of the pillars. It's a special feeling when you come here, and I think that was the first feeling of people when they came here. 60 million years ago, the land here was a giant slab of rock made from an ancient seabed. Millennia of earthquakes and wind erosion left behind the stone pillars we see today. But this process of erosion left something else behind in the soft rock, caves. Our view from above reveals the caves that became a magnet for a new religion that was sweeping across Europe. Here in Meteora, there are so many caves the first monks used to stay in these caves and they used to enlarge all these cavities in order to stay there. Early Christians sought out these caves to live a life of solitude. They devoted their lives to prayer, completely cut off from the rest of the world. The life of the first monks, the first hermits, is almost like uh, the life of the first caveman. When people started to live in caves, they used to live in the same conditions. And I think trying to reach their limits, maybe they're trying to reach the connection with God. Today, one abandoned Christian cave is decorated with flags and scarves. These are offerings from locals, brought every year in exchange for good luck a tradition that goes back more than 300 years. Later, in the 15th century, another very different wave of Christians arrived at Medeora. The Muslim Ottoman Empire invaded Greece, and Christians, fearing theft and persecution, fled to the mountains. Instead of living in caves, they founded these remote monasteries on top of the tall stone pillars and filled them with their religious treasures. During the Ottoman Empire, these rock giants provided a lot of safety and it was very difficult to approach these monasteries. Living up to 550 meters in the air, the monks were safe from attack. The only way to reach the monasteries was to climb a series of long ladders, which could be drawn up whenever the monks felt threatened. But a life this remote comes with challenges. Everything used to build the monasteries had to be carried up ladders or pulled up in nets with ropes. The monks still use a system of pulleys and ropes to move goods around today. They lower nets to the ground 
to work like elevators and use cable cars to move between monasteries perched on different rocks. I love this place. I'm so amazed every time I come here. I can totally understand the feelings of the first men when they came here. Even when you are not a monk, you feel the greatness of nature.